Well, thanks for the contact today. Uh, good luck with your activation at 7-3. 7-3, good luck for yourself. Yours is from Kilo India 5, Golf Bravo Quebec, on the air. This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to go activate a park and we're going to utilize Compact Tennis Tri-Band 20-inch that we've already seen on the channel mounted on top of a truck. This week, we're going to build a ground plane. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. So we began by building a ground plane counterpoise for the antenna in this video. Now, as I mentioned, we've used this video on a truck and it worked out really, really well. But we thought, you know, he does have, Dr. Jack Nielsen of Compact Tenna does have some photos on his website of building your own ground plane, either for up in the attic or down on the ground. And we thought, why not go ahead and make one ourselves? So we looked around AC4DM's hardware store, which is his farm, and he had some of these um, panels that you use for building sheds. Now these are insulated panels. You've got steel on both sides with an insulation in the middle. All we have to do is tear those metal sheets off or basically remove them from the insulation, and that's exactly what we did. They're a little bit dirty, but they're easily cleaned up. So we got to work peeling those panels off. We ended up pe uh, peeling two of those panels off uh, to get four sheets. And we uh, took the first pair of uh, steel sheets and we cut them down to four feet. And then we were gonna use three of, two of these, excuse me, to create a three by four sheet of metal. And this is uh, the dimensions that were depicted on Compact Tenna's website. And here, AC4DM is using one of those uh, tools that he has just laying around the shop. This is an air-based tool for uh, cutting sheets of metal. Makes the job extremely easy. You could use snips for this, but uh, he's got this air-based uh, sheet metal cutter that worked a treat, and so we got to work. Now again, we're cutting two of these sheets down to four feet long. We'll then combine two sheets to get three by four. So now we're marking where we need to place some holes so that we can put these two sheets together. So again, we're measuring two or three times and then cutting, or in this case, creating holes for some uh, bolts and uh, butterfly nuts and so forth to go through. Here we're utilizing one panel over another to create where our holes need to be for the panel that's going to be underneath. And then we're adding a washer and a butterfly nut with the uh, stainless hardware there, the, the, the uh, bolt itself, and that puts the two panels together. And this gives us our three by four sheet that we will use as a ground plane counterpoise capacitive coupling piece of metal. Now, based on his reference design, he utilized a sheet of aluminum foil. And we thought, well, you could certainly do that. But since we had more of these panels uh, on the farm, why not take a couple more sheets from one more panel and utilize those to get that eight-foot length? Now, they'll be greater in width than a, uh, than a foot of foil or with a foil, aluminum foil, but we thought this would be a better option given that if we need more surface area, we can reutilize these sheets. Now, according to Dr. Jack, uh, you need these additional sheets for potentially capacitive coupling with the ground, the water table. And if you're in a good location, you may not even need them. So we cut those sheets down, created our holes. Now we actually have a kit that we can carry with us in the emergency communications trailer. The next day, we went up to Chris's place, KY4CKP, and we started rounding those edges. These are steel sheets. They're sharp. They had some burrs on them that can cut you very easily, and so we needed to clean them up a little bit by removing some of those corners on all four. 
And in addition, we got out our uh, scraper and there was a little bit of insulation left on the other side of these uh, sheets, these steel sheets. So we got to work scraping that uh, insulation off of each of the panels. And once we were done, we had a mess on our hands. In fact, we told Chris's wife that uh, termites were going wild in his garage. Now, as I mentioned, these edges on these steel sheets are extremely sharp, and we don't want anybody to get cut. So we thought, why not add a little bit of duct tape, or in this case, Gorilla Tape, on the edges to, uh, to dull those edges, and then we'll also add a little bit of that Gorilla Tape to the corners. Uh, eventually, we're going to add some of that automotive um, piping, you can call it uh, edge guards, that you can put on your doors uh, for your automobile to prevent scrapes and, and whatnot with other vehicles in a parking lot, but we didn't get a chance to add that in this particular case. But we do have the tape on there along each of the edges and on the corners. And we're just trimming that up a little bit to make it look even neater. This is what it looks like once it's put together. We went out to a local park and we want to utilize the reference design that Dr. De Jack Nielsen had on his website and then do some SWR checks. So we've got the three by four sheet and then we've got some aluminum foil eight by one foot spread out on one end. Now this is utilizing the nano that Chris has and you can see we're looking at the 20 meter band from 14 uh, 14 megahertz down on the left, bottom left there to 14,350. And you can see most of the band is incredibly usable. Some of it is above two, but with a tuner, not a problem with many radios today. Here we're looking at the bottom end of 20 meters, and uh, we're still below three. Pretty close anyway. And then we went to the top portion of 20 meters just to see how far. And we got to about 14.304, 308. It depended on uh, the uh, orientation a little bit, but uh, still under three. So again, a ICOM 7300 and some of the other radios that are out there can tune that no problem. Here we're looking at two meters. Now, this setup, this antenna specifically is a tri-band antenna, two meters and 70 centimeters as well. So we're looking at the two meter band completely usable across the entire band. 70 centimeters was even better. If you want to utilize 70 centimeters with this antenna, you're going to be greatly impressed with this ground system that we put together, counterpoise. And you can see the entire band that we were looking at there. And then for fun, we checked GMRS below two for GMRS as well, or very nearly. So should be uh, useful for GMRS if you were out uh, camping. So we've got our SWR checks. We're pretty happy with that. We've got our sheets. We can do the eight foot by a little bit greater than one foot. I think the uh, width of the uh, ramp there was about 22 inches. And it actually showed up just like the reference design on the website. So next, we needed to go out to a park. So we went to General Burnside Island State Park here in southeastern Kentucky. And coming up, we're going to make some contacts. Dakota, Dakota, from Kilo India 5, Dolph Bravo Quebec, calling to you, parked on the air, standing by. Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, park to park. Right, there's Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Station. Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, park to park. All right, Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, park to park. I've got you a 5 3 at the park, Kilo 8656. 8, 6, 6, QSL? QSL, we've got you about uh, 5 2 and Kilo 1257. 1257. All right, I got you your park at 1257. Well, thanks for the contact today. Uh, good luck with your activation at 7 3. 7-3, good luck for yourself. Yours is from Kilo India 5, Dolph Bravo Quebec, parked on the air. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, calling CQ Poda Parks on the air, activating park Kilo 1257, Kilo 1257, Kilo Yankee 4, Charlie Kilo Papa, calling CQ Poda. Kilo Charlie 5, Echo Tango Yankee. Kilo Charlie 5, Tango Tango Yankee. 
Roger, Roger, you're a 5'9", Oklahoma. Roger, I've got you about 5'7", five, 5'7", seven, five, seven here in Central Kentucky, Park Kilo, 1257. Roger, thank you for Kentucky, beautiful part of the country. It's a beautiful day and thanks for picking us up. Kilo 5, Echo Delta Whiskey. Kilo, Kilo 5, Elka, uh, Echo Delta Whiskey. QSO, QSO, I got you about a 5-2 into North Texas. Roger, I've got you about 5-4, five, 5-4 four, five, four here in Central Kentucky. We're at Park Kilo 1257. Roger, Roger, I had a red spot. Thanks for the activation, 7-3. All right, thank you very much, and have a good one. November 5, Sierra Lima Yankee. November 5, Sierra Lima Yankee. Yes, November 5, Sierra Lima Yankee. It's your 5-9 and nine in Texas, Tango X-ray. All right, thanks for the 5-9. We've probably got you 5-7, five, 5-7 seven, five, seven here in Central Kentucky. Park number is K1257. Well, thank you very much for 1257. You have a great day today in 73. Yep, thanks for picking us up, 73. This is Kilo India 5, November, Charlie Zulu. Kilo India 5, November, Charlie Zulu. Kilo India 5, November, Charlie Zulu. Roger, QSL, I've got you probably 5-3 as well here in Central Kentucky, park number K1257. All right, thanks for picking us up and have a good one. Kilo 5, Papa Echo. Kilo 5, Papa Echo. Uh -huh. Kilo 5, Papa Echo. Yeah, Kilo 5, Papa Echo, you're 5 9, Texas. Thanks for the 5-9 Texas. We've got you about 5-4, five, 5-4 four, five, four in Central Kentucky. Park number is K1257. Okay, QSL, QSL, thank you very much, 73. 73, thanks for picking us up. Kilo Zero, Whiskey, Mike Lima, QSL. QSL, I've got you about 5-7, five, 5-7 uh, seven, five, seven in Central Kentucky. Park number is K1257. Roger, K1257, I got you at about 5-5. Five, five. Into Minnesota, 5-5, five, five, into Mike November. All right, excellent. Thanks for Minnesota. Thanks for picking us up. All righty. So now that we've actually created our POTA activation, we got uh, 12 or 13 folks coming back to us. Chris went back to his shack, and as we saw in an earlier video, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a card up in the top right corner. He's going to use Ham RS to create a log of this POTA activation. Now, what's really great about Ham RS is it makes your inputting of your data much easier, and it creates the ADIF file that you need to submit for your POTA activation. And what Chris has done here is he's gone into HamRS. He's going to fill out some of the pertinent information for this POTA activation. So in this case, you can see he's put in his frequency, the amount of power that we use that day, and the park that we're activating. In addition, he's going to go and start inputting uh, the call signs that we received during the activation. One of the interesting things about HamRS is it also does a lookup, so it lets you know who the individual was and, in many cases, where they're lo located. We're also looking at our signal reports, both received and what we sent. And we'll also need to go in and adjust the date and time. So here's our first line here with the, uh, the person who came back to us. We're going to go in and adjust the time as well as the date. When he was uh, inputting this, it was on the 11th, but we actually did the POTA activation on the 10th of November, and he's also going to go in and set up the time. So you can see it already has information from the previous screen. We're just going in and editing that information, and then we'll click Save. There we go. So you'd want to do this for each of the contacts, and you can also put in your park to parks as we'll see towards the end. Next, we'll go and put in our second call sign. We'll just do a couple of these to kind of show you the process. Again, the video we already have posted. So here we have 
uh, Kilo Charlie 5 Tango Tango Yankee. Signal report. Notice the information in the top right corner is already filled in, so we don't have to do that again. And that second one take took even uh, less time. We're going to go edit it for uh, putting in, again, the date and the time. That's about the only thing we'll need to edit. And then that second contact will be done. And you'll do that for each of the contacts that you got for your POTA activation. So we're going to click Save, and our second line, second contact is in. What we're going to do next is transition where we're showing you adding a park to park and how to save the file into the ADIF format that you need to sub for submission. So here you can see Chris has gone ahead and put in all of the contacts, but if you look at the top two lines, we actually have park to parks. So when you're putting in a call sign, there is an option was uh, this individual representing another park. And if you come underneath their call sign, you can actually put in their park number, and that way you get extra points for park to parks. So Chris is putting in their park right here. Again, the top right information is already there, and all we'll have to do is edit that date and time once we have all the information in. But you can see now we have three lines of park to parks that we got that day. And then all we have to do is edit the time and date and save one more time. So this way you can actually set up your POTA activations much quicker, get everything ready for submission, and it's not such a tough uh, process as it once was. Just finishing up, going to click Save, and we're good to go. So really, now that we've got all of our contacts in, both Park to Parks and regular hunters, we need to save this or export this into the file format needed for submission. So we're gonna to go to the top right corner and we're gonna to go to the little gear icon over to the right. We're gonna choose export to our ADIF file and we're gonna give it a name. Chris is gonna put this in whatever folder he wishes. Click Save, and now that ADIF file is created, and we're ready to submit that to the POTA folks and get credit for that activation. We had a lot of fun creating this ground plane counterpoise uh, that uh, does what is called capacitive coupling by Dr. Jack Nielsen, and uh, we utilize his reference design as well as we came up with our own uh, partial redesign utilizing sheets of steel. Uh, from those uh, panels that we uh, liberated from AC4DM's inventory. And they worked out really, really well. We got the exact same numbers that he had published on his website on all three bands. So it's an incredibly great antenna for not only POTA activations, but 20 meters in general. You can utilize this setup on your vehicle if you have the, uh, the proper steel frame, or you can build one of these ground plane counterpoises on your own. As you can see, we didn't use the ramps, the additional ramps for additional surface area because they were unneeded. The piece of concrete that we actually put the antenna on top of must have had rebar in it because we also got really good conductivity and it acted as a ground plane really, really well. So we made some really good contacts all the way out west to Roswell, New Mexico, and as far east as Connecticut uh, for one of the other contacts. And it just worked really well. Could I recommend this antenna and this ground plane counterpoise system? Absolutely. And if you're looking for a simple project, I really encourage you to whip out some, uh, some tools and make your own ground plane counterpoise. And then you'll have a kit that you can take with you easily for camping and other types of exercises. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the other side. 73.